Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In today's session, I shall be explaining you the congestion control in TCP. So in my uh, session wherein I have uh, explained the different services provided by the transmission control protocol that is the TCP, I have listed out that con uh, TCP provides error control, flow control, congestion control, it is a connection oriented protocol, it is a reliable protocol. So these were the different features that I have listed out there and also given the explanation. So in this session, I shall be telling you in what way, in what are the different mechanisms okay, that are provided by the TCP to control the congestion. So here let us begin with first the introductory for this congestion control because I have to make you recall what exactly is congestion and what do you mean by congestion control. So in my introductory classes definitely when I started with the services provided at the network layer, I have explained you what exactly is flow control and what exactly is congestion control and what is the difference between the flow control and the congestion control. So just to try to recall, I'll help you with a scenario. You have the source host that is the sender is here and the receiver is here. So for flow control, normally you see if this is the path from the sender to the receiver, the packets or the segments which the receiver receive, fine. If the receiver is not able to process these packets at the same rate at which the sender is sending, then there will be an overflow of packets at the receiver side. Receiver side, there will be an overflow of packets. So there is, there should be some mechanism to control this flow and that is called as the flow control. So this is like at the end side. End side, you can tell it there is a flow overflowing of packets and it has to be controlled by some mechanism and you call it as the flow control mechanism. But what about in between during transmission also definitely there is a possibility that there is a there can be overflow of packets and that is called as congestion in the network. So in order to control this overflowing of packets in the path okay there should be some mechanism and that is called as congestion control. So congestion control in TCP actually there is a policy here in the TCP the congestion policy is having three different algorithms. The first one is the slow start, the second one is the congestion avoidance and the third one is the fast recovery. So these are the three different algorithms which TCP uses in order to control the congestion. So let us start with what the congestion control policy here. The first algorithm is called as the slow start. The name for the slow start is also, there is another name for the slow start, it is called as the exponential rise. Now how exactly the slow start works and to understand these algorithms, I, what I have decided is, I have given you one illustration here. In this illustration, I am trying to show the slow start phase and the congestion avoidance phase. So what exactly is happening here? Look, first there is a client here and there is a server. The very first thing is, see now the client, at the client side I am writing CWND. CWND is congestion window size. In the previous video, I have explained about RWND. RWND is what? the receiver window size. The receiver's capacity is known by RWND whereas the network capacity is known by CWND. So CWND the congestion the sender will always send us the segments depending on the value of what CW and RWND. That is always it takes the minimum of these two. Whichever is minimum if RWND is advertising some number as the receiving capacity and the network is advertising another number as the receiving capacity, the minimum of those two will be taken as the what the sender will decide that okay my window size is depending on the minimum of these two values only fine. So in the slow start phase, the client initially if you look here CWND, is val CWND value is equal to 1. Here we assume that the CWND is started is getting started with one MSS. One MSS is what maximum segment size. With one MSS, it starts. One indicates here one MSS maximum segment size, and also we should assume that each maximum segment size will carry the same number of bytes. So with this assumption, we'll look into the uh, this one, the slow start algorithm of the congestion control policy. CWND value is 1. So the sender is sending a segment here of 1 MSS and the server will respond with an acknowledgement. Whatever I have shown in the red color font is what the acknowledgement. So the sender and the receiver, see it is like this, the sender and the receiver. If the sender sends a segment and immediately if it is receiving an acknowledgement, then the sender will be what? 
motivated to send the next segment because it has received immediately the acknowledgement it means that the the segment has received at the receiver side successfully there is no loss of the segment as long as there is no loss of segment the sender should keep on sending the segments but how it will come to know that there is no loss in the no loss of segments in the network with the acknowledgement if it is receiving the acknowledgement then it is going to send the next segment so see then what has happened is client after receiving the acknowledgement for the first segment it has decided to send two segments at a time now immediately and it has received the acknowledgement for those two segments then the segment yes when i am getting the acknowledgement for those two segments which i had previously then the sender will assume yes possibly there is no congestion in the network so definitely i'll try to send now more number of segments in the third round so this rtt is round trip time after one rtt see in the slow start what has happened is in the beginning in the slow start in the beginning that is start cwnd value is equal to 1 but after one rtt after one round trip time cwnd value has become how much 2 after one rtt the cwnd value has become 2 it has received the acknowledgement then after the second rtt then the sender will try to send how many four segments 1 2 3 4 four segments are sent and it is receiving all the four acknowledge acknowledgements for all these four segments then it will try to after this third RTT, it will try to increase the segment CWND as 8. So, you can see how it is getting increased here 1, 2, 4, 8. So, we say there is an exponential rise in the number of segments that are sent from the sender side. But how long these segments, this way should continue? Here in the illustration, I have stopped at this point wherein I am telling that CWND value is equal to 4 in the illustration. Suppose if it is next time, if it continues, it can be 8, 16, 32, like this, it keeps on increasing. So, until when it the sender can take this kind of decision by always making what the number of segments increase after every round until the threshold value is reached. So, the TCP takes care of this by setting a threshold value. TCP will also assume that if the sender keeps on sending this kind, this way the sending uh, the segments, definitely it will rise to congestion in the network. So, better to stop at certain point and we say that point as the threshold point. So, once the threshold is reached, once the threshold is reached, let us assume the threshold is 32, something like this randomly I am telling, the threshold is reached, then it should stop now. It should stop this phase and it should begin with the next phase called as the congestion avoidance. So, in the congestion avoidance is what you can see from here the congestion avoidance phase starts. Congestion avoidance is what whatever is the previous value at the slow start phase, the congestion window value was 4, it will just increase the segment size by 1. So, 4 plus 1, in general I am writing i plus 1. If it is 32 there, 32 plus 1 becomes 33. So, here I will continue with the same count. So, it has stopped at 4, it will increase by 1 in the second phase and this second phase is called as congestion avoidance. The other name for the congestion avoidance is additive increase. So, it increases by 1. So, it sends how many 5 segments here. So, 4 plus 1 5, it is receiving the acknowledgements here. Then it will increase once again just by 1. So, that means whatever is the earlier value 4, it will increase by another 1. That means now 4 plus 2 becomes 6. So, then it will try to send 6 segments, it is receiving the acknowledgement for all the 3. Then in the next, after this RTT, what it will happen, it will increase, now this was 4 plus 2, no, after this it will be, yes, I have written already, 4 plus 3, it will send 7 segments and it will see whether it is receiving the acknowledgement or not. Now, this will continue, uh, uh, like once this is continuing, the congestion avoidance phase, there is a possibility of congestion in the network that assumption that also we have to assume it's not that there is no congestion in the network that is what is the congestion control algorithm what if there is a congestion in the network how the sender has to take care in once again sending the number of segments that decision it has to take okay how many segments to reduce how many segments to increase so that is what is the congestion control this is definitely a, a analogy with the vehicle traffic also once the traffic police starts sending the uh, this one vehicles in one direction on one road after a certain point definitely there will be what uh, traffic jam there similarly here also in the network if there is a congestion in the network okay then there should be some mechanism to control also that's how this is the algorithm used in tcp to control the congestion so it is like what at the 
uh, like I have explained till now, up till what? Up till what? Congestion avoidance. Now, let me tell you how exactly the sender will come to know the congestion. So, here that this one I will explain you with a graph. So, let us understand this algorithm with a graph. Y axis, let us write CWND. It is CWND versus round trip time. Initially, what no? There is an ex the it is what exponential rise that is the slow start phase. So I'll just show you like this the slow start. This is what the exponential rise happening. Then after this, now we will we we have shifted that is the sender has shifted from slow start to congestion avoidance. At what point when the threshold value is reached? So let us assume the threshold value SS. H or I will use a little, uh, small this one variable as th only to threshold. If the threshold value is set to let us assume as 28. So once this threshold value is reached here 28, if the condition the threshold is what the threshold is 28 in this case, then it will start the additive increase phase. It will start the additive increase. Now this is what I am just showing. This part is here. And this part, whatever I am showing in the graph is what the exponential rise is here. So, it is continuing like this, the sender. Okay, first let me start with exponential rise. Then I have to shift to additive increase. Once I see what a threshold value reaching, then it will start the additive increase phase or the congestion avoidance phase. Now, let us assume that here there is a timeout. Timeout is what? In the previous class also, I have explained in the previous session that a timer is sent. Timeout indicates congestion in the network. So, when the sender comes to know that there is a congestion in the network, immediately there is one step taken here and that step is called as it will bring the CWND value directly to 1. It will make the CND value to 1 and then it will start once again the slow start phase. At this point, what it will do is in the second stage, the threshold value is set to 50% of what it was set earlier. So, 50% of uh, 28 is what? 50% of 28 is 14. So, when, once it reaches this part that is 14, CWND value if it becomes 14 here, then it will start the, it will start the additive increase phase. You can see here, this is the additive increase phase or the congestion avoidance. This is the additive increase phase or the congestion avoidance and you have the slow start or the exponential rise here. You have the slow start and the exponential rise here. So, you can always indicate like this. Okay. This is the slow start SS. This is the congestion avoidance from here to here. But here, no, only on timeout, only on this timeout, on this occurrence of timeout, it has brought down completely because timeout indicates severe congestion. So, previous video when I was explaining to you about the error control, there I have explained that our, uh, retransmission timeout and three duplicate ACKs. So, the difference I have shown there, but one more important difference you should know, our retransmission timeout indicates severe congestion and three duplicate ACKs, when a sender is receiving three duplicate ACKs, it indicates light congestion. So, here on the occurrence of retransmission timeout, that is RTO, then what will happen is, it will completely bring down the CWND value equal to 1 and then it will once again start the what? the exponential rise or the slow start phase but here the threshold value is what 50 percent of the previous earlier value so once it reaches 14 then now let us assume here three duplicate ACKs if three duplicate ACKs arrives then it will start this phase called as the fast recovery sender is experiencing what three duplicate ACKs situation in that case it indicates what light congestion if light congestion what is the measure taken whatever is the existing value of the threshold 14 divided by 2 is 7 plus 3. This is the logic followed here. It becomes what 10. So, this becomes what the CWND value here. So, let us show here this is the 10. 14 is here means approximately I will show it here. It is not bringing, see previously when timeout was there, it brought down the CWND value directly to 1. But in case of 3 duplicate ACKs, it is bringing the CWND value to this. So, that indicates what it is not a severe congestion in the network. Then it will start what the additive increase phase. It is simply like the additive increase phase only. So, this this is called as the fast recovery here. Whatever it is taking the next measure here immediately after arising at the three duplicate ACKs, 
it will start the additive increase phase. So normally what was happening is time out is first exponential rise and additive increase phase. But fast recovery is similar to additive increase phase only. It will start here uh, as soon as it uh, encounters or it faces what? Three duplicate ACKs. So I can show from here once again. Yeah. From this point to this point is what slow start. From this point to this point is what? The congestion avoidance. From this point to this point is the fast recovery. So this is how TCP uses these three algorithms to control the congestion. So this fast recovery is optional in TCP. So hope this session is useful to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.